Brett and I are going to be making some grilled swordfish with a roast vegetable salad and garlic mashed potato. To start the dish, I'm going to put on the roast vegetables so they'll be ready in time for the garlic mashed potato and the swordfish. I've got about 150 grams of diced pumpkin. I'm using butternut pumpkin or butternut squash. We'll throw that in a bowl. I like to use a, a bowl to put all my vegetables in and my seasoning and my oil so it's all really evenly coated as opposed to having really blotchiness all over the, plash, all over the tray. Next, I found these fantastic little um, red capsicums or peppers as you like to call them. And I'm just gonna throw those in whole. The asparagus, even though the pumpkin's actually going to take a little bit longer than the asparagus, I really want the asparagus to caramelise so it can actually take a lot more heat. It's not going to look as glamorous, but it's going to taste really good. And when you're doing your asparagus, all I do, I don't cut it, I just snap it off, okay? And that's the point where this is the best flavour of this asparagus. So sometimes you get the whole asparagus, sometimes you only get um, a couple of inches. So again, we just snap it to the size of the asparagus and I know that that's going to be absolutely beautiful. And then I've just got some baby's uh, zucchini and all we do is just take the ends off and because they're so small and they'll be really nice and sweet, I'm just going to cut them into three. And so they'll roast down beautifully. Now because I wanted to give it a little bit of extra flavour, uh, I love to use herbs and spices. So I've got a Creole mix today that I'm going to add to it just to spice it up a lot and I'll go really nicely with the garlic mashed potato. Okay, so a couple of, that's probably about one and a half teaspoons and a good tablespoon of olive oil. Okay, table and a half, maybe. <laughs> go the healthy. Go the healthy, that's right. And also an extra pinch of salt. We're looking at a good teaspoon. The reason you put extra on is because it's gonna to stick to the bowl as well, so it's not gonna be all over our vegetables. And so now, you just jiggle it around so they're all evenly coated, okay? All right, I'm really happy with that. And what I'm looking for is the gloss to be all over the vegetables. It looks actually like I want to eat it as opposed to looking a bit random on a plate, on a tray. So I have a baking tray. Great tip that Brett just reminded me about is putting baking paper down. That way, the cleanup is 10 times faster and easier. Once your baking paper's down, spread out your vegetables, give it a shake, and it's that easy. I'm just gonna pop it in the oven for about 25 minutes, and so that's gonna really nice caramelize breakdown. Well, Brett, over to you. So now I'm in charge of the garlic mashed potato and the swordfish. Camilla's looking after those beautiful roasted veggies she's just put in the oven. The potatoes, I've just peeled the potatoes and cut them into rough chunks, covered them in cold water, and a good pinch of salt. I use probably two good pinches of salt and that helps the flavour come through the potato. Now, they're going, once they're tender, I'm going to drain them off, let them air dry before I squash them and we'll finish them with a little bit of butter and some beautifully garlic infused olive oil. And that's how I get my garlic flavour into my mashed potato. I just find it gives me a lot more consistency with the garlic flavour than trying to incorporate boiled garlic cloves. But we'll go through that later on when we finish the garlic mash. Onto our beautiful swordfish. We've got a gorgeous big piece of swordfish straight from the markets. It's still got the skin on and the bloodline. So what we want to do is just move, get rid of that and get two nice little pieces of swordfish ready to serve. So basically we just want to cut that in half. There's not a lot of wastage. You just want to get rid of that really tough skin. A little bit of fatty end and just a tiny little bit of the bloodline. A little bit of the bloodline doesn't matter, but just get rid of that blood. It doesn't look very appetizing on the plate. So there we've got our two beautiful medallions of swordfish ready to be grilled. Now I'm not going to grill those just yet because I just want to wait a little bit longer for my mashed potato and Camilla's roasted veg because they'll only take about two or three minutes um, to cook, about a minute, minute and a half per side and then we allow them to rest so they just finish cooking gently in the middle. Okay, now our mashed potato or our potatoes have been uh, cooking um, quite a while. They're nice and soft, the knife goes through beautifully. I'm just going to drain these off 
and I'm just going to let them sit. I've got a non-stick pan that I use and I've still got a little bit of heat on and I'm going to let them sit in the pan with the flame on. So what happens is any water that drips into the bottom hits the hot pan, forcing the steam up and you can see that steam's coming up beautifully. So what it's doing is forcing that heat up. Obviously heat rises and that hot pan, it's still got a little bit of liquid left in there but it's all going to evaporate off with that heat. Once they've air dried, that's going to help get the water out. I'm going to put them in, squash them and we'll finish the mashed potato off. While we're waiting for that to air dry, we're going to get our swordfish on. Now a little trick with the cooking any fish or chicken or steak is don't put oil in your pan. Don't put oil in the grill because any oil that's not underneath the fish is going to burn. Right? And the more um, you burn the oil, the higher the fat is in your oil and they're the bad fats. You've got your good fats and your bad fats in your olive oil, so your good oil, your bad oil. When you burn oil, that's when it's really unhealthy for you. So we're using a beautiful olive oil here. So what you want to do is just lightly brush your swordfish with your olive oil. Always season it, salt and pepper, but last minute. Don't season it too early because it will draw the moisture out of your fish. A little bit of pepper. And what we're going to do is put that straight in. You can see the pan's really hot. And a little trick when you're doing this, if you've got asbestos fingers, just press it down a little bit on the grill. We just want to get those beautiful grill marks. Now, back to the mashed potato. That's all ready to go. We're going to drop those in. And we're going to squash them up. Okay. So the swordfish has been on for about just over a minute. We're just going to turn that over and you can see how it's got that beautiful caramelized dark lines and the flavor of that is going to go all the way through our swordfish. So we're going to leave it again for another one minute on that side. Coming back to our mashed potato while we're doing that, we've got 100 grams of butter. So we're just going to throw some butter in. It's nicely cubed and we're just going to work that butter into the mashed potato. You can see that I've still got a light flame just so it's not cooling the mashed potato down too much. Okay, so I've taken the swordfish off now we're just allowing that to rest. We want to rest it for about three or four minutes because the juice, the heat in the bottom of the pan has forced the juice up and then if we cut into it now, that juice will come out. Where if we allow it to rest, the juice will settle back evenly through the fish and give you a nice moist piece of swordfish. We're just finishing our mashed potato now. We've got the uh, butter in there and you can see it's getting beautifully mixed together. Now to finish this, we use a garlic infused olive oil. So we just put a little bit of that oil in, probably about 30, 40 mils and just work that in. And as soon as you add that, you get that beautiful flavor of the garlic coming through. And I'm just gonna work that in the pan and we're ready to go. So I'm gonna take that from the heat. I'm just gonna allow the mashed potato to cool down a little bit. And I'm gonna get it back to Camilla who's gonna plate it up with her beautiful roasted vegetables. Okay, so we've now got the swordfish and the garlic mash ready and Camilla's got her beautiful roasted vegetables ready. So we're just gonna plate this one up just want a little bit of the mashed potato just to sit there on the plate. And then we're going to put a swordfish on top and then Camilla's going to finish that with her beautiful roasted vegetables. We just need a little bit of colour on that. So just to freshen up the, ro the roast vegetables, what I'm going to do is just rip off a few leaves of parsley and literally rip it on to the roast vegetables. Grab a spoon and then just mix it all in. Okay, and then we're going to, you know what, I think it'd be nice on the top. Mm, half, half. Half, half, yeah. yeah. That always looks good. Gorgeous colours. Yeah. And we want that red of the capsicum to really stand out. And see how the asparagus is really wilted down and caramelised. It's beautiful. Okay, and there you have it. Beautiful. Our grilled swordfish with garlic mashed potato and roasted vegetables. Excellent.